Good morning. Welcome to Cortland United Church. Thank you for joining us this morning, those here as well as those online. For our announcements, just an awareness that our board did meet this past Thursday, and I think we set branch our Clean the Highway third Saturday in October. So we'll be posting that and getting stuff out. So yeah. <laughs> October 22nd. We are just planning on beautiful weather on October 22nd to help make that happen. Do we have other announcements we want to lift up at this time? Any other announcements? If not, then let's stand and greet one another. Make sure everyone feels welcome this morning. <laughs> okay, so I just looked at the bullet. So let's turn in our hymnals to number 88, 88, Fairest Lord Jesus. Let's join together and sing together number 88. If you're willing and able, let's stand and let's sing. Oh, the 
twinkling starry host that Jesus shines brighter Jesus shines purer now all the angels have can boast a beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of God and Son of Man, glory and honor, praise, adoration, now may be seated. Let us join together in the call to worship, which is printed on your bulletin, if you would respond in the bold print. The Lord has come for us from God. The Word has come to us from Jesus. The Word flows to us from the Spirit. Let us join together in the opening prayer. If, uh, let's pray this together. When we fall into the traps of groundless fears, who deliver us. When an epidemic of worry threatens to overcome us, you protect us. When harmful words are flung to us, you answer our cries for help. Gracious God, we worship you. Amen. At this time, may the youth and the children please come forward for the children's sermon. Okay, I've got these with different colors in them. So you guys want, might want to choose. There we go. Then grab one different color in it. Grab one, there you go. Grab one, there you go. Very cool. There you go. All right, so I've got a story to tell. Uh, first ask, if you could have everything you want and you would just be happy, what would you want to make you just happy for everything? Money. A what? A fluffy dog. A fluffy dog, really fluffy dog, would make you really happy. A baby, what's that? Cats and baby dogs would make you happy. Anything else? What do you need? Money. Money. How much money? Multiple billion dollars. Multiple billion dollars, Yeah. Could stop time. That is a really great one. Anything else make you really happy? Okay, imagine, yeah? Yeah, for uh, health, uh, puppies, cats, lots of money, kindness. kindness. We could do all, the, if you had all those things, would you need God? Yes. Really? So, if you had all the money in the world, would you need God? Yes. If you had all the talent in the world, would you need God? Yes. If you had a really cute puppy that loved you, would you still need God? Yes. No. You might be God, though. Yes, that's true. All right, so the story is today, somebody, they call him a rich guy, they have a specific name for him, he's got everything he wants, and there was someone who didn't have any money at all, and the person who didn't have any money at all needed God, and the rich man didn't think he needed God. And so in some way, I have some eyes there to have an awareness because the story is, is they both die and they forget that no matter what we're doing, I think God is watching us. It's an awareness of God is watching us and wants us to do everything that is kind to other people and loving to other people, even though we might think we can do it on our own. God is watching. And that's a good thing because God wants really good things for us. So just remember that we always need God no matter what. Let's pray before we go back. Dear God, let us always remember you. Oh man, thanks for coming up. Suckers on the way back if you want some.
The next one, and make sure I have the right number here. Janine, number is just a closer walk with three, the what number? 380? Yeah. <laughs> 380? Let's turn to page 380 in your hymnals. And let's remain seated as we sing this together, number 380, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. First reading is in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 19, and that's on page 202. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmless desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some people have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this, Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame 
until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortally and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal domination. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of life that is really life. The next reading is Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger and what fell from the, with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime, you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fi fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. <clears throat> He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to him, them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be <clears throat> convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. And that ends the reading. Thank you, Sue. Someone was engaged, and she was worried. She went to her mother and said, I think we have issues. My new husband-to-be, we were talking about faith, and does not believe in hell. I'm not sure I can marry him. And this mother of the daughter said, oh, don't worry. Said, marry him, and the two of us together will be able to convince him that there's a hell. And it's all said and done. Uh, you've heard of oxymoron, oxymoron in the Greek word, really means pointedly foolish. Two things that don't seem that fit. Clearly confused, acting naturally, open secret, jumbo fish. There are sentences, and our family used to say this all the time. Uh, you may not know that I am, I, you may know that I am not always right, but I am never wrong. We used to say that all the time. And this is actually from Dolly Parton, who said, you'd be surprised how much it costs to look this cheap. 
Uh, that, those are oxymorons. Um, and that, this week I was thinking about the word rich. Somewhat an oxymoron in and of itself. What does is, what is rich mean? So a Sunday school class, a kid was asked, they told the story of Lazarus and the rich man, and he said, at the end, would you rather be the rich man or would you rather be Lazarus? And the kid said, I want to be the rich man when I'm living, and I want to be Lazarus when I die. Uh, Last week we talked about mitzvah. It's a term that uh, Jews use. Mitzvah is, is in some way we try to do the right things, that get us closer to God. And so there's a story that tries to get us to do the right things. And so as you read the story today, uh, today, it makes you think of the story of the Christmas carol. We all know the story of the Christmas carol. I have to remember the last time I saw this was on uh, stage at Wesleyan when Maggie was was in college. And it's the story of a guy and Marley dies, and he's the business partner of Scrooge. And in some way, he wants to help his own business partner because Scrooge is being Scrooge. He doesn't care about other people. When the holidays come, he gets put off by what they do. And so Marley sends these ghosts to Scrooge to wake him up. And so he sends them in a variety of places. He sends the the ghost from the past. And in some way, he shows him how people are seeing him from the past and kind of what happened to him to make him Scrooge. Then he sends them ghosts from the present, how people are relating to him now. And if he keeps this up, What are those that are going to round him going to be like and remember him by if he keeps acting the way he's supposed to act? This all comes from the passage that Susan read today. Dickens wrote the story out of the story of the rich man and Lazarus. It's a biblical story. Except... Dickens did not like the ending to the biblical story. So he changed it. He changed it where Scrooge in some way saw, oh my gosh, if I keep living like I'm living now, that's not who I want to be. That's not how I want to be perceived. That's not how I want people in the future to experience life because of what I have done. And he was moved to change. His heart was warmed. He acted to people differently because his actions, what he's doing now, had an effect on other people, not just on himself. Well, The part of the story that's a little scary is it uses the term of the great chasm. There have been books that have been entitled the great chasm. Uh, There have been poems about the great chasm. And the chasm is, is when we die, there's heaven and the hell, and there's no separation between the two. And yet we need to remember what God really wants for us is God does want for us to respond and to notice other people and to be kind, and to be loving to other people. The story was written, and of course it was a story that was told by Jesus, and so when Susan was reading it, and the end of the story, which we like it, even though Dickens didn't like it, the end of the story was, even if someone would die and come back from the dead, no one would listen to them. Well, we know Jesus is going to die and come back from the dead. In some way, he's foreshadowing. Even if he does that, sometimes we can close ourselves off from God where we don't even notice that. Now, you think to yourself, oh, there's no way that that can happen, and yet we know that can happen. 
Sometimes we're outside in the fall and we don't appreciate how beautiful it is outside. Sometimes we're hanging around kids, grandkids, neighborhood kids, and they scream and they laugh, and we don't notice how beautiful that is. Sometimes we're with our friend and our family, and we're just sitting there in the presence of God and enjoying one another. And sometimes we're so irritated that we don't even notice. And sometimes Jesus can die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, so we'll treat each other differently. And there are days we just let it go by. What we know of in our heart of hearts, we have that pull inside that God is pulling us to do amazing things, and we do amazing things. There was a church that had a dinner and had leftovers, And they went to the family in town that they knew had the greatest need, and they were going to give that food to the family in the greatest need. The preacher didn't know how to do this in a way that they might not feel bad. And so he knocked on the door, and he said, you know, we just had this big dinner, and we have a a whole bunch of food left over, and we want to share it with someone in need. And the mom who answered the the door said, that's wonderful. She said, I know a family in town who needs that. And she went with the preacher to take it to somebody else. Uh, The Huskers went to Ireland this year, and they were telling the story. um, And it was about the Choctaw tribe in Oklahoma. Uh, They had a connection with Oklahoma, and here's the connection. The Choctaws, uh, in 1847, there was a famine in Ireland, and there was a Native American tribe that raised money, $187, and they sent it from the Choctaws in Oklahoma to Ireland to help them in the midst of their need. So in 2020, when COVID was coming on, Ireland started a GoFundMe page because the Choctaws were so affected by what was going with COVID, they wanted to do the same thing almost 150 years later. There, I think inside of us there is an oughtness. We know what we ought to do, and I think we call that the Spirit of God, that God pulls on us. We get tired. We get busy. Sometimes we don't think we need God, and and God keeps pulling. And God keeps pulling. Uh, I read this week that this is one of the few times within one of Jesus' stories he names someone. Lazarus really means God is my help. So Lazarus was to the point that he knew what he needed in life was God's help. And how do we get there? That's where God wants us to be, is is no matter what we do, where we're at, what's going on, we know we have a connection with God and we can turn to God no matter what. Yes, a lot of times we think life is about more, M-O-R-E. We just need more. If I had more of this or more of that or more of that, when we really need is we need love. God's love of us, a love of somebody else, a love and recognition of our community where we respond and be in the ministry that God calls us to be in. And we notice other people because we're called to do so. In the name of Christ, amen. Let us now turn on our hymnals to our next hymn, number 49. 49 in your hymnal. We're going to sing Lead Me, Lord, number 49. If you're willing and able, let's stand and sing this together, number 49. Lead me, Lord, 
thy righteousness make thy way plain before my face. For it is Thou, Lord, Thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safe. Now let's sing it. If we could just have the women sing it one time through, if the women would sing it one time through. Everyone together. For it is the Lord, the Lord only that makes me insane. And now let's have the men sing it. Make thy way plain before my face. Everybody. For it is thou, Lord, thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. You may be seated. It's the time within our worship we lift up our joys and concerns from our community of faith. Do we have joys and concerns we'd like to lift up at this time? Sister-in-law Patty, big jumps this week. Praise for continued recovery. Thank you. Janine, thank you for being here. Yeah. Other joys and concerns. If not, then let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Well, let's not do that because it's not listed there. Uh, let us be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. We are thankful, O oh God, for the opportunity to come and to worship you. We're thankful for this moment that we slow things down enough to recognize your presence in this place. God, we call this sacred because you're here. It's also sacred because we're here together. As we lift up our joys and concerns, those spoken as well as those on our hearts. Oh God, we know that there are people around us who are in the midst of challenging times. Surgeries, struggle, depression, fear. Oh God, these are people that we know and we love. We'd ask that you would lead us into our own ministry together. And may we as a congregation find ways to support one another so we can reach out and meet those needs. And now as people who have been loved and forgiven, 
Let us now all join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive our tithes and our offerings. Blessings flow, praise God, all creatures here below, praise God above the heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Let us join together in the offertory prayer which is printed in your bulletin. May our gifts this day go to serve those who need healing, those who are hungry, and those who need a friend or community. We may not always notice them, but you do. And so we pray that they might be touched by your grace and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing for our closing hymn, number 382. Be Thou My Vision, number 382. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day and by night, waking or sleeping, a presence my life. Be thou my wisdom, O thou my true word. I ever be with thee and with thee, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. High King of Heaven, and my treasure Thou art. High King of Heaven, 
my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, a bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Thank you for choosing to worship today. Let us go forth filled with God's Spirit. In the name of Christ, amen.